you know, it's like a zam if you do, a zam if you don't. Fonse, what are you talking about, zammed if you do, zammed if you don't? It would have been perfectly fine if you didn't. Like if you hadn't. Don't you want to know what happened, at least? No, I don't. Fine, just tell me. So, boom. No, 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 We're not doing the all right, boom thing. No, we're not doing that. Why? Because... Fine, just tell the story. So, boom, this is what happened. I was at Boston Writers' Conference for Writers Who Write. Demetrius was there. Okay. You know, he just put out an album on Spotify, mm -hmm. his poetry album. Boston Magazine loved that shit. They wrote about it. Mm -hmm. I saw. <sighs> Have you heard of it? Does talent belong to the talented? Or does the universe use artists for channeling? No. Does every verse exist before it is written? I haven't heard it, no. My pussy isn't offensive. Stop associating weak men with the privilege of being named after this pussy. They don't qualify to be held to such standards. Their masculinity can't be weighed to the amount of God that has been balanced on my womanhood see it covers the face of curious hearts. The ears of silent symphonies. Weakness doesn't amount to pussy. Your masculinity doesn't amount to pussy. When you are filled with 80% of God's saliva in your body and you bleed every month, it tends to remind you that God speaks through our bosom. Creates an abortion full of moons for the sun to rise and name him morning. Weakness doesn't amount to pussy. Masculinity doesn't amount to pussy. So why feed them with these compliments when they starve from the strength of femininity? See, I heard a man tell a boy the other day that he hit like a pussy. See, a man intended to compare weakness to my vagina, as if his innocence was scarred by the uterus, as if the muscular cannon lost him in the midst of his masculinity. Pussy isn't offensive. My pussy is power, and the next time you want to compliment a man, make sure he hits as good as these words. Make sure that his strength isn't weighed by the depth of his muscle. When you play on a big girl scale, you weigh it to the amount of pussy. So dear little boy, no matter what anyone tells you, I'm sorry, but you would never be capable of hitting like a girl. You don't have that strength. Next time you compliment a young boy, make sure he hits as good as these words, because my pussy isn't offensive. And darn sure isn't something to compliment a man who can't acknowledge what power is. So when we understand that pussy doesn't amount to weakness, we know the alchemy behind power. So if we all strive to be powerful, we should all accept that we strive to be pussy. Pussy. So, a dyke walks into a bar, and the bartender asks if she wants to lick her. A dyke walks around in the world, and the joke is on her. A dyke comes out the closet, and all the mouths cackle. All the hands pick up stones, all the mothers bury their daughters, a dyke does nothing, holds up the wall at a club, and all the femmes still ask this hoe's name. All the straight women lean in, all the lips part singing, a dyke prays in a temple and a sanctuary sprouts eyes, and the walls grow teeth. A dyke cracks into a smile on a TV sitcom and doesn't outlive the season finale. A dyke finds solace in another dyke's arms, and just kidding, the joke is still on her. A dyke stumbles into a white queer party and no one sees her. No one can unblend the nighttime from the nigga. A dyke drinks a beer at a gay club and a gay man grabs her ass, reminds her that what is hers is not. A dyke brings a date to the family reunion and they both get hung from the family tree. A dyke waits for the bus and ha ha, never makes it home. A dyke grinds on the dance floor and bullets bring her knees to a buckle and she fall out dead with laughter. I learned about abbreviation and expiration dates. I learned about time. I learned 
that I needed to abbreviate my name, that I could no longer use my two last names. I learned that my middle name became a letter. I learned to abbreviate my days so that I can fit it in the amount of minutes of the phone card purchased that day. The conversations with my mother no longer ended with a bendición mami, but with a queda un minuto. And you'll be surprised how much you can fit in un minuto because I remember having those tough conversations. It was like the operator was an expert in apprehension. She would come up to release the tension with a queda un minuto. That announcement at times was the worst and many times was the best. It came in carrying so much grace and I was thankful. El mundo no es otra cosa que lo que somos mientras estamos colocando diminutos paquetitos repletos de inseguridades en el pecho del otro. Uno se aleja tan desconcertado, deseando regresar a buscar lo que se deja almacenado, forrándose de partículas de polvo y salitre. Asume la parte de desespero que le corresponde. Asume del ojo acoplarse a la mirada que una misma produce cuando regresa y te mira. Mientras el hambre va naciendo en todas las bocas. When life is a foreign film, thoughts become subtitles. Where souls find crossroads between preluding masterpieces and breeding disasters. I just want my spirit to breathe and seek daily the prosperity of faith found within gospel hymns written during slavery. So I pray with thoughts because beliefs direct every action. And living in this horror film where villains never die, monsters can linger in our minds. The way tragedy, zombie bites us until we become brain dead, walking remnants of the death that crumbled our backbones to ashes proves we are alive, but hardly ever live. So I pray with thoughts to make sanity my getaway. After clocks turn like gun chambers, every tick tock another click, pop leaving peace outlined in chalk. Love under hospital sheets and trust wrapped in caution tape. So I pray with thoughts. Young age was taught to fear God, but it's something I'll deny. Because when the news becomes a murder scene on repeat, banks roll dice with the economy, parents are endangered species, and our children's supposed safe havens like churches and sports teams become a graveyard of molested innocence. It makes the evils in this world easier to find. They say forgive them for they know not what they do, but it's what we know that makes us do. So I pray with thoughts, finding scripture via telepathy to gain strength mentally. I quit speaking to the sky and discover the holiness I needed behind my eyes, making happiness a party I'm always invited to. No matter how bad it rains, I encounter serenity with every random thought I pray, amen. She felt connected to the soil the way the sun covered her in its warmth, the spirit of her community to continue on even when a silver lining wasn't promised. Throughout the time, they had learned to be their own heroes. Jenny Saved knew her answer before she even started her coffee. But when the song her dad had always sang to her began to play, she texted her sister, I can't do it. Sorry, pero yo soy de aquí, como el coquí. Okay, so you're both writers at a writer's conference. Mm -hmm. So remind me how you're pregnant with his baby again? He was the only person I knew there. Oh, and how do you know him again? You used to date him. Yeah, I know, exactly. I fell right into that shit. Um, Listen, my dear, I am just as surprised as you are that this whole thing went down. You couldn't possibly be as surprised as I am, the person whose friend uh, slept with their ex-boyfriend. Not possible. You just tell the story. 
So boom, this is what happened. A couple of writers were like, yo, you guys wanna go grab a drink? And me and Demetrius were like, sure, let's go grab a drink. And mm -hmm. you know me, mama. Do I? You know Do me. Do I know you, Monse? Okay, you're being dramatic. Dramatic? Okay. Oh, I think dramatic is when your friend sleeps with your ex-boyfriend and gets pregnant and, oh, that's his baby. Yeah, that's dramatic. Una tela novela. Mama, you need to understand. This is the first time I ever had fun. I haven't been on a date since I had a... Boyfriend? Yeah, that a boyfriend, thing. yeah. Al fin. No me importa tan sola. I don't mind being by myself. It's mad freedom, no dick to suck, mama, you know? Right, yes, I understand. <clears throat> Monse. Monse de Luna. Yes, that's me. And you must be Maite Lopez. Maite. Maite. Maite Lopez. Yes. Um, yes, nice to meet you. Mr. Luna, I'm a huge fan. I, I really loved your last book. It was odd and dark, yet colorful and hilarious. And seemingly and completely unintentional and accidental. Thank you, I truly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Shall we take our meeting into the living room? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Keep telling me. So, okay, sometimes it gets a little lonely, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not lonely. Like, I'm cool by myself. I never need anyone. But it just gets really lonely, and then... You try like something cute, you want right. to start dating and stuff, and these dudes are just mad boring. Mad boring. Ugh, I know what you mean, you know? girl. These fuck boys be out here in these ripe streets. Oh, yeah. They be out here. so much for meeting with us, honestly. We truly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. No problem. The museum is closed on Tuesdays, and I thought this would be the great day for us to meet. Um, and it's so great to meet you, Miss Del Luna, truly. Mm -hmm. So, what did you guys want to meet about? Okay, so our best friend Catalina is getting married. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I hope the person isn't boring. <laughs> I was uh, referring to the conversation that I over... Um, I'm sorry. So, you were saying. Okay. So, you were saying? So, our friend Catalina is obsessed with this museum. Mm -hmm. um, I remember after high school, she used to always um, want us to come here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I used to be like, nah, <laughs> I'm good. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no offense. <laughs> no offense. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so we wanted to surprise her and maybe have her wedding photos here in the courtyard because she loves the courtyard. And um, we just wanted to give her a little treat, you know, a little something nice. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, wow, <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, the museum does not allow uh, professional photo shoots. Uh, and to protect the uh, artwork, uh, we don't allow anybody into the courtyard. But you can always visit the museum and take Instagram photos, as most people do. Uh, no flash, of course. So what if she comes in her wedding dress and takes Instagram photos? Uh, that would not be okay. Um, you'd be surprised to know many people try to do that. So what if she comes? That would be a hard no for me. Um, and a hard no all the way around. All right. We understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we're glad that your friend loves the museum. Mm. It's truly a special place. Mm. It is. All right, well, thank you so much for meeting with us. We yeah. truly appreciate it. Yeah, the pleasure was all mine. I'll probably be here okay. in uh, the living room doing some work anyway. Okay. Yeah. Um, no problem at all. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Yep. take care. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, keep telling me. <clears throat> so, what can I say? The drinks were pouring, the, the beer was flowing, it mm. was those blue and white lights everywhere. It was a vibe. And <sighs> things just happen so fast. Okay, well, then what happened? Like, what actually happened? Aún guardo las heridas del ayer Aunque no te importe nada, nada, no desistiré Hasta vencer No, no, y me pierdo en tus besos Si le doy el chance a las 
mil tonterías al bendito que sería Y repito y repito como un disco rayado Me imagino el paisaje, estás en cada detalle Aproveché del tiempo lo que había esquivado hace un tiempo atrás Me costó aprender de la experiencia Confieso que esta locura me hace bien El sentimiento es más puro que cualquier otro amor En tus besos Yo le doy el chance A las mil tonterías Al bendito que sería Y repito y repito Como un disco rayado Me imagino el paisaje Estás en cada detalle Sabes cuánto me cuesta olvidar Condom broke? Yes. Ugh. I mean, I haven't been that good with my birth control lately. I've been a little spotty, missing days. Mm. So I decided to go to the hospital and get a STD test in pregnancy and the whole nine. <laughs> uh, mm. The STD was negative. The, of course, pregnancy was positive. I mean, I didn't believe it at first. I, so I went to CVS, I got a pregnancy test again, and I decided to just test it out myself over and over. Yeah, and yeah, right. And it was positive. Okay. Wow. This is like a... It's crazy. It's like a damn TV show out here. Like, what the hell is going on, Monse? Do you think I should tell Demetrius? I don't know. Do you want to tell him? No! I, I don't want him to know that I'm having his baby. You crazy? So you're planning on having his baby? I mean, I don't have any time. Abortion about to be banned. I'm about to be on this handmaid's tail under his eye talking about have a blessed day. What? Monte? I better have an abortion now before it's too late. I think maybe you should try looking at it in a different way. I'm so sorry I hurt you right there. I love you. I love you too. What are you gonna do, girl? You, you remember that scene in Sex in the City where they were in the pizza shop and they were talking about telling Steve about Miranda being pregnant and they had those pizzas? So you think I should tell Demetrius? Oh, oh no. I, I was just thinking about the pizzas. Hola, ve 
Venezuela, con la Venezuela, con la Venezuela. Tengo de mujeres dueña, con la Venezuela, con la Venezuela. Tengo tres mujeres dueña, con la Venezuela, con la Venezuela, con la Venezuela. Tengo tres mujeres dueña, con la Venezuela, con la Venezuela. Venezuela.